One of the most common ways to do a tessellation is by using a translation. So to show you how to do that, I'm going to first turn on the grid. And I'm going to start with the point tool and just map out the four corners of a square here. Now, I always have the kids start on a piece of graph paper, and I tell them that rather than drawing a square, which is one of the most basic tessellations out there, it's just a pattern of repeating squares, almost like this grid right here. Instead of drawing a square, let's draw something a little more interesting. Like, let's connect the top vertices of the square with maybe like a little V-shaped arrangement. And let's do something similar on the left edge of the square, just something like that, okay? Now from here, what you would do is you would take this sort of left side V and translate it to the right side of the square, and then take the top V and translate it to the bottom of the square. So let's do that. I'm gonna grab my translation tool, and let's start by translating downwards. I'm gonna go from the top of the square to the bottom of the square. That's gonna define my vector. And it says to select some objects to apply this to. So I'm going to use my shift key and select this segment and that segment, and then apply that a bunch of times here. OK? So I'm going to do the same type of thing now for this left side of the square. So let's define a new translation. And I'm going to go from the left to the right. And holding my shift key, select this and this and apply that across. All right, so now this right here is the polygon that is going to translate and then tessellate the plane. So I just need to complete the translation. So I need to take these two segments here and translate them down. And I need to do the same thing with all these. So the easiest way to do that is just to draw a rectangle and select all these guys here and apply that going down. And then I need to now select all of these segments here and holding the shift key, get these top two right here and apply those across. All right, so now you got yourself this pretty sick little tessellation from a translation. And so now it's more dynamic because I can move this point around here and I can move this point around here. And moving those points has some kind of neat effects. But usually what I do is I would have the kids hide those points. Oops. There we go. I would have them take these points, maybe lock them first. Go back here to construct, lock them, maybe hide them, and then just have some fun playing. All right. So if you need a little more detail on how to create a translation tessellation, there you go. Have fun with it, and I uh, can't wait to see what your kids come up with.